Guys, when you are disciplined in something, that doesn't mean you just do it one time and be like, all right, where's my results? Let me help you out. When I first started my, my journey, <laughs> my, my health journey, I worked out probably a couple times, you know, I was in the mirror like, ooh, how we, where are the results? Where are the results at? Baby, you ain't done nothing. You did it for two days. Okay. Next scripture. Next scripture. Uh-oh. Colossians 4 and 2. Devote yourselves to prayer. I don't even really need to go any further, but I am. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. It says devote yourselves to prayer, which means that you give in and of yourself. You give your energy. You give your all to prayer. Guys, when I was studying this and I was meditating, he was like, some of y'all just be like, okay, thank you, Lord. And we just going about our business. And then we expect mountains to be moved and demons to flee. Now, let me be clear. Can mountains be moving, demons flee with just Jesus? Absolutely. But God says, I want, let me tell you what prayer does. Let me tell you some things that prayer does. Prayer actually, pr pr prayer as helps us to establish and grow our relationship with God. That's one thing. Prayer also invites in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Prayer gives direction. Prayer can keep you from temptation. Prayer actually works miracles and gives answers. Did I find y'all in there somewhere? He's, guys, we have got to be devoted to prayer. And prayer is nothing but conversation with God. I don't, he doesn't want just five minutes of your morning while you rushing to go to work, putting your lipstick on and stopping at Starbucks. The scripture says be devoted to prayer. That's what we just read it. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. We have got to be disciplined in prayer. He doesn't want just what's left over of your time in prayer. He wants you to be intentional, intentional about spending time communicating with him. It gives you direction. It invites the Holy Spirit in. Guys, and let me tell you something about God. When you spend time in prayer with him, you don't just talk to him, but he has the nerves to talk back. What's the next scripture? Because we're going to read all these scriptures because I need y'all to know how serious it is to be disciplined in prayer. Ephesians 6.18. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all the believers everywhere. So you mean to tell me that I shouldn't just pray for me and everything that I need, but I should pray for my brothers and my sisters? Constantly, continual. Guys, we've got to be disciplined in prayer. Last scripture. First Thessalonians 5, 17. I mean, that's pretty. Never <laughs> stop praying. <laughs> Do y'all see what the consensus is? He's saying it doesn't matter when, how, where. Never stop praying. You've got to be disciplined in prayer. Guys, you have to. This is how God wants to build a relationship with you, or one of the ways, is through prayer. This is how you can learn his voice. It's in prayer. Another way we need to be disciplined. Yeah, I knew it was coming, the word of God. We have to be disciplined in the word. Yes, be disciplined in your mind. Be disciplined with your bodies. Be disciplined with you pray when you pray, but we also have to be disciplined in the word. Scripture, Joshua, chapter one. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instruction Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written therein or in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So you mean to tell me that way back in Exodus, Jesus would tell people to take the word of God and meditate it on day and night, keep it in your heart, keep it? Yeah. 
God was telling them way back in Exodus when they, had ne- when, they was, when they was on their way to the promised land. Way back then, he was saying the same thing that he's saying to us now. Listen, guys, we have got to meditate on the word of God. We have got to be disciplined, meditating, reading, and studying the word of God. And don't forget, we can actually show you how to use the word if you come to practice. God, I thought about something. I think it was Ephesians chapter 6. Guys, it, it says that the word of God is our sword. So tell me, how you plan on fighting the enemy with no sword? We get into certain situations and circumstances and we just, oh Lord, help. Where is your sword? How come when bad things happen, you don't whip out that sword like, uh-uh, because all things work together? Huh? 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 All things work together. Huh? What you got, devil? All things work together. How come when it, stuff starts happening, you say, nope, yep, because it says, it's, uh, the Bible says that he always causes me to triumph. What? Everything the enemy, the reason why we can't, spew, we can't throw down his lies and his schemes and his plan is because we don't have a sword. Or if we have it, we don't know how to use it. Again, come to practice. If Jesus, the Savior of the world, had to use the word of God to defeat the enemy, tell me what we got to do. Let, oh, y'all don't believe that Jesus had to use the word of God? Lonzo, put, we're going to go there. Matthew chapter 4, I got back up back there. Then Jesus, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. Now, I was like, you mean to tell me the Spirit going to lead you to be tempted? But that's why the Bible says that he, would, he was tempted at all points, yet without, without sin. So he, him being in human form, he had to be tempted so that he can relate to what we, it is we go through. Huh? But the Bible says he didn't sin. We just be sinning all over the place. Anyway. 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, now listen to the devil. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Listen to what Jesus said. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He used the word. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. Look, at, Listen, listen. Now who's quoting scripture? The devil says, for the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot against the stone, Jesus. Your angels got you, Jesus. Just jump. So you mean to tell me? That the enemy knows the word of God too? And this is why it's important to not only read and study the word of God, but to pray so that you can not only learn his character in his word, but know his voice from prayer. Uh, Let's keep reading. Oh, wait, you took a... Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Verse 8 says, next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said, I'll give it all to you. Now, he is talking to Jesus, y'all. Talking about he going to give him all the kingdoms of the world. Sir, really? I give you all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Jesus said, get out of here, Satan. Jesus told him, for the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. But this is what got me, is verse 11 says, then the devil went away. Yo, this is why it's important to get in the word of God and read it and study it and get your commentaries. And guys, there's something called Google. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful thing. You can put your scripture in there and say commentary, and then it will actually give you what the scriptures say if you don't understand it. Different variations. I mean, there's all kinds of commentaries. I mean, I would prefer you go Tony Evans, but you can do whatever you want. 
so that you can learn the word of God and know when to apply it and use your sword. We have to be disciplined in the word of God. Y'all, I'm so, and I don't mean no harm, y'all, but I just, it, it really, I, I, it gets under my skin a little bit when I see believers and Christians just depressed and anxious and just sad all the time and just all this other kind of stuff. Why are we not disciplining ourselves to pray and to read and study the word of God? Let it get on the inside of you because when it does, you gain strength. And then you can tell the devil, I don't think so. And have the joy of the Lord being your strength. Why? Why? Now, listen, I'm, again, I'm not being insensitive. I know that there's real depression and real anxiety, but some of this stuff we're dealing with is because of lack of discipline. It's because we, Lord, okay, Lord, Lord, I got you, Lord, tonight at 9 p.m., I'm going to get in my word and I'm going to pray. Now, y'all know, y'all know, y'all finna go to sleep. And then you're going to wake up like, oh, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to go to sleep on you. I didn't mean to... We've got to be disciplined in the word of God and in prayer. And if you don't understand the word, there's so many resources that will help you do that. And don't forget, you can come to practice. <laughs> when we're disciplined, we're still on the journey. Guys, here's, I'll talk about it in a second. When we're disciplined, it leads to the next part of our journey. Our, the next part of our journey is development. Discipline leads to development. The word development means to grow in a more mature state. It's the process in which something grows, changes, or advances. Hmm. God says, I need you to be disciplined so I can develop you. I want to develop you. I want to mature you. I and I know some of y'all saying, I've been disciplined. I gave my tithe that one time. <laughs> Guys, discipline is something that you do over and over and over again over time. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit let me know that we do. You, you go ahead and you give your tithes and then you show up to church and you be like, all right, God, where you at? I gave my tithes. You said that you would actually open up the windows, head there, boy, shot of heaven and pour me out a blessing. Hold up. Wait a minute. That is what the scriptures say, but you need to be disciplined in it. I did come to Bible study. You don't remember. You don't remember seeing me. I was there. I had on a red shirt. I had got my new wig. You didn't see me. I was there. Yeah, I seen you, but I said that was February, boo. It is May. <laughs> Guys, we have to be disciplined because God says, I'm looking to develop you. I'm trying to mature you. I'm trying to get you somewhere. You want to know why you're not being used? It's because you're not disciplined. You want to know why God, uh-oh. You want to know why God hasn't sent you the husband? You're not disciplined. Oh, we got quiet. You want to know why he hasn't done certain things? He says, I need you as a believer. I need you to be disciplined. If you don't honor me, how are you going to honor him? If you don't honor me, how are you going to honor her? If you don't honor me, like, I mean, I, it leads to development. Some of us are praying for stuff we haven't been disciplined and developed for. We have not been disciplined or developed for. But you can't get development unless you discipline yourself. There are no skipping steps. Guys, I was going to show, you know what, we're close, we're, we're close to closing. Discipline leads to development so that God can get you to our last point, destination. If you're not disciplined, he says, I can't develop you, and then I can't really give you the life that I really want you to have. You can't get to, we want, 
We want destination with no discipline. 